Hi, this is Maya with RICO. This video is about relativity's concept, analytics. You may have seen our earlier video, which showed you how to do structured analytics reviews, specifically email threading and textual near duplicate. Now this types of analytics set will actually analyze the structure or the word order of your text to group documents. Concept analytics it's a little bit different. It actually uses a mathematical approach to index the co-occurrence of words across documents to build concepts and relationships to group your documents to facilitate your review. We do also have classification analytics, which drives relativity's active learning. This is yet another type of analytics which uses user input whether a document is responsive or not responsive, for example, to help predict the responsiveness or not responsiveness of other documents that haven't yet been reviewed. But with concept analytics, you don't need that additional user input. It's actually going to crawl across your documents itself, and it's going to code your documents or group them by concept. Now, this is really helpful, especially to build a seed set for your active learning classification. Now, to set up a concept analytics index, you're going to need a saved search. Now, that search can be a subset of your database or your entire database. If you wanted to break up subsets of your databases to multiple indexes, you can totally do that. Otherwise, you can build one analytics index that goes through your entire database, and then down the line you can parse out different subsets using clusters, for example. So when you talk to your case admin, give them a searchable set in the form of a saved search, and they can build this for you and then run it across your documents, and then you can start digging into the results. The first place I recommend you check is your field tree. Relativity is going to create a new field for you called Conceptual Index, and it's going to list all of your different analytics indexes as choices. So here we see Analytics Index. This is going to show us all of the records that are included in our concept index. Anything that's tagged not set, you should be aware of because these are the records that are excluded from your index and therefore won't appear when you do um, clustering or find similar documents. Take a look at these records, run some searches, evaluate them, do some pivots, some filtering, all the normal things that you would do in a subset of documents and determine where they stand. Once you've done that, you can then create your clusters. You can create a cluster from any saved search or folder or basically any document view that you've created. Here we have a saved search that is our review eligible documents. So we've done email threading, maybe some search terms. We've called down a subset of records that we're going to review. And once you have those in your document list, you create your cluster by going to the mass action option cluster. You find your pop-up window, you select make a new cluster, give it a name, pick the index that these are included in that you want to run them across, and then submit for clustering. You let Relativity run its process, and then navigate over to your clusters browser. You're going to have clusters for each subset of records that you've clustered using that same math action process, and you can interact with these clusters just like in any folder browser view or saved search browser field tree, you can select and crawl through your documents based on the names of the nodes that are assigned by Relativity when the clusters are created. If you don't like those names, you can right click and rename cluster and rename it in the pop-up that appears. Now, this other contextual menu is Visualize Cluster. This makes, and it's the same as this button here at the top, and this will make your cluster visualization in the form of a widget. 
So this widget works like any other widget. You can navigate across document sets and your graphic will appear to highlight um, the specific cluster for the documents you're in. This works in the field tree and the folder browsers and the saved searches. You can use the pivot itself to navigate your documents and to execute filters or searches. You can see our document list has changed based on the cluster we've selected. And if we control click on others, we can apply that and add those to our list. Here are the conditions that appear in our search panel so we know what we've selected. You can interact with the cluster clustering um, field. You're going to have one field per each cluster that you create, and you can manually select which cluster you'd like to see. So this is a good way to get a sense of how your documents are organized. What these clusters, you know, represent, you can scroll around, click in, you can start building search terms, use this to pull out documents for your potential seed set, and you can interact with the uh, pivot and clusters by creating search conditions and even, you know, doing your um, mass editing features as well. So once you've created your visualization, like any widget, you can save it as a dashboard. Here we already have our clustering and clustering review eligible widgets. And this allows us to take our widget into the other browser panels. And we can start navigating through our documents to see which nodes each custodian has uh, documents for. Our legend here will show us the percentage of documents. And as we scroll over the different nodes, we get the different colors represented in the legend. You can also see a graph of the document breakdown, documents that are in the cluster set and not in the cluster set, and these are interactive as well if you want to exclude anything that's not in your cluster set. This one is really more helpful for the review eligible. That gives us a sense of how many documents were excluded from our review. And if we wanted to focus on just the ones that are in our review, we can select the blue and now everything is being returned as our cluster. And again, it makes a search condition. So if we wanted to remove that condition, you do so in your search panel. Other ways to interact with this pivot itself, we can obviously edit it as a normal pivot. Um, maximize, remove, and so forth. Here's our display type. Currently we're looking at the dial display type, but we also have circle pack. It's just another visualization. Gives us the same general information in just a slightly different format. As we magnify the depth, this gives us all of the individual little clusters within the greater cluster um, nodes. So we can get just another different visualization of these records. Here when we click on individual, it still updates our list, it just looks a little bit uh, different. So clusters are a great way to look at your data from the top down. So you have your big broad categories, but let's say you have a subset of records that you want to look at and you want to increase the number of hits that you have. So I've made a saved search of some documents that are very interesting. I want to find other documents that are related to these. So I've enabled the cluster fields in my view, and I can actually take a look at the clusters that these reside in and broaden my search. So I'm gonna add condition. I'm gonna return clustering and I'm gonna find anything that's 10.2.2. I'm going to add that, all of those clusters into my view. I'm going to add all documents back in. And here we have 251 conceptually similar documents to the one important document I was looking at before. And again, we can look at our dashboard. If we wanted to have our visual of where we are at in our bigger cluster dial, 
or even visualize it in our circle pack. So if we even wanted to broaden this further from either the dial or the circle pack, when you mouse over and right click, you have an option to view nearby clusters. This gives you a graph of the cluster you're in, the center, and the clusters that are nearby based on similarity. You can also zoom in or out to see the different levels of clusters that are available. And you can increase or decrease the similarity. You can see it zooms in and out. So if I wanted to add some more clusters to look at, broaden my search further, I'm selecting the control key and I'm clicking. And now I can select apply and that may or may not return any results. Here I've cleared my previous search conditions and I can increase the number of hits by selecting the nodes and broadening my search. To get out of this view, you can right click and select the close nearby clusters option. And again, we still have our filters. We can clear out our search or go back to our dial, do all of the normal things that we do with our widgets and pivots. So another sort of bottom-up approach or you know, when you're buried in a document, you don't want to navigate back out to your document list. From within the viewer, you can interact with um, the concept searching as well. You're not using clusters, but you are using the same index. So when I get into a document and I right click on it, I get the option for analytics index. You can select the find similar documents option and your search results is going to appear in your related items panel. These results you can navigate into just like any other related items, and you can also mass code them. So if you're finding documents like this one and you wanna just mark them as responsive along with this one, you can do that or mark them for uh, printing or any other search that you might have. Additionally, if you have specific text, you can right click on a specific word either in the viewer if you have searchable text within your document or navigate to the extracted text if you only have images available. So you right click on the word and you can select analytics index, keyword expansion, concept search, and find similar documents are all available. Keyword expansion is sort of like the DT search option to search your dictionary. And it gives you all of the contextually similar conceptually similar terms that your analytics index has recognized. So if you're building search terms, this could help build search terms. Um, it can help you build conceptual searches. And again, if you use analytics index concept, I keep hitting the wrong, there we go. It's a little tricky. You do a concept search for that specific word. You'll get the same results panel up here. And this is exactly the same. The concept search is exactly the same as going up to your document list, selecting analytics index and searching oil. You can also expand that term, find your um, keyword expansion. And you can copy your selected keywords just like you do in your DT search dictionary paste your results and search. So I'm not getting results because I am excluding my view. Back to documents, back to analytics index, paste, and now I will get the same 120 results that I got um, when I expanded that term and searched find similar documents. Okay, that was a lot of info. Conceptual analytics databases enable you to cluster, find similar documents, expand your keywords, 
you know, look at your documents from a top level down, from the bottom up. You can prioritize your review. You can organize your review. You could even use it to perform quality control to identify textually, I'm sorry, conceptually similar documents to existing responsiveness privilege documents. Um, you can just generally explore concepts um, within your data in a way that you maybe couldn't begin to, you know, understand your documents because you're just not, you haven't reviewed them all yet. It gives you a jump start on finding those key documents. You can jump start your assisted review and generally get a much better picture of your database without having to do the heavy lifting of looking at everything. All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. Happy reviewing.